All right, in this next video, um, we're going to do some more implicit differentiation problems just because they seem to be pretty popular. People like to see quite a few of these. So suppose we have to take the derivative of 1 plus x equals sine of, let's say, x y squared. So we're taking the derivative with respect to x of both sides. Again, what makes this an implicit differentiation problem is the fact that we have our x's and y's jumbled up um, on the same side. So if we take the derivative on the left side, the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of x is 1, we'll have to use the chain rule along with the product rule on the right-hand side. So the derivative of sine is cosine. We leave the inside parts alone. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, again, making sure that we use the product rule. So the derivative of x is 1. We'll leave the y squared term alone. Put a plus in between. Now we'll leave our x alone. The derivative of y squared is 2y. And this is where we have to tack on our dy dx, or y prime term. I like to do dy dx as both eventually my y primes end up looking like y's to the first power and then I end up multiplying them when I shouldn't. Okay so at this point again the idea is you just want to solve for dy dx so you need to get rid of any parentheses or brackets that you have so I'm going to distribute this whole cosine xy squared term to each part inside the brackets. I'll pull the y squared out front and then have cosine of xy squared Plus, I've got a 2, I like to alphabetize, 2xy. I'll have a cosine of xy squared. And then again, but multiply that by my dy dx. Okay, so I'm just distributing that term to each piece. And again, the idea is you want to get everything that has a dy dx on one side. So I need to subtract away this term y squared cosine xy squared. So on the left side, I'll have 1 minus y squared times cosine of xy squared. On the right side, I still have my 2xy cosine xy squared dy dx term. And now, to get my dy dx term, I'll simply divide by the 2xy cosine xy squared term, and I'll be left with 1 minus y squared times cosine of xy squared, all being divided by the 2xy cosine xy squared term. And now I've got my derivative. Okay, and that's all you got to do. So, again, a little tedious. I shouldn't say all. These are can be pretty complicated problems. Um, but they're fairly, you know, it's the same procedure every time. You just have to be careful. They're kind of long, so it's definitely easy just to make one little mistake um, and have things obviously not work out correctly. So suppose we have to find the equation of a tangent line. Suppose we want to find the equation of the tangent line let's say at the point 1 1 on the curve about x squared plus xy plus y squared equals 3 okay so in, again in general to find equations of tangent lines you take the derivative and you plug the point into the derivative and that gives you the slope of the tangent line so again to find the slope we basically need to solve for dy dx so if I take the derivative on the left side I'll get 2x again I'll have to do the um, the product rule on the xy term so I'll put that in parentheses just to maybe highlight a little better where it's coming from so the derivative of x is 1 we'll leave the y alone plus now we'll leave the x alone the derivative of y is 1 and again we have to tack on our dy dx term plus the derivative of y squared is 2y squared dy dx and the derivative of the right, 
right side, 3 is just 0. Okay, so you could actually plug in your point 1, 1 here um, and solve for dy dx, but I'm going to go ahead and solve for dy dx just to kind of uh, practice that algebra anyway. So on the left we'll have 2x, get rid of the parentheses, so in this case since there's a plus 1 out front we can basically just remove them. And I still have my 2y squared dy dx term equals 0. Same thing as before, I'm going to leave all my dy dx's on the left side, so I've got x dy dx plus 2y squared dy dx and on the right side I'll have a negative 2x I'll have a minus y term after subtracting my 2x and my y again I can now factor out the dy dx term and I'll be left simply with the x plus 2y squared in parentheses I've still got my negative 2x minus y and then I simply dis divide by the x plus 2y squared term. So on the right I'll have negative 2x minus y divided by x plus 2y squared. And at this point we want to find the equation of the tangent line at the point 1, 1. Well if you remember point slope formula it's y minus y1 equals the slope x minus x1. Well they already give me the point, again the point being 1, 1. So I already know that it's going to be y minus 1 equals m x minus 1. The only thing I'm missing again to figure out the equation of the tangent line is the slope in this case. Well, just like before, the slope comes from plugging the point into the derivative. So if we, if we evaluate the derivative at this point 1, 1, I wish it wasn't 1, 1, maybe I should have picked a different example, but the idea again is the first coordinate's x, the second coordinate's y, everywhere there's an x in your derivative formula you'll plug in a 1, everywhere there's a y in your deriv derivative formula you'll also plug in a 1. So we'll get negative 2 times 1 minus, whoops, not y, but minus 1, 1 plus 2 times 1 squared, well, let's see, it looks like on top we get negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 3. On the bottom, I'm going to get 1 squared, which is 1 times 2 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So it looks like our slope is actually turning out to be negative 1. And that's simply the value we need to plug in to our formula. So the slope, excuse me, the equation of the tangent line will be y minus 1 equals negative 1 x minus 1. And people often ask me, you know, is that okay to leave it this way? Unless it says to put it in slope-intercept form, um, you know, I don't see why this isn't as good as slope-intercept form. To me, it's an equation of a line. Um, slope-intercept form, it tells you the slope and the y-intercept. Well, in this equation, you know the slope and you know a different point that's on the line. It's not the y-intercept, but um, I don't know what's really so special about the y-intercept. So unless it specifies in general I would say just stop there and um, be like a, a normal lazy math person and save yourself some effort okay so I hope these extra implicit differentiation problems are helping um, I've definitely got some more examples of implicit differentiation on my website along with all kinds of other derivatives feel free to take a look um, shoot me an email if you got any questions and I'll be happy to address them